Let's move on to the next speaker, who is Herman Pfefferkorn. Herman's going to speak about uh, floral changes across the Middle Lake Pennsylvanian boundary in the Appalachian Basin of North America. Herman, it's all yours. Thank you. After the marvelous summaries of Stan and Cortland, I will talk about something much more specific, a smaller interval, and also about relatively old work. So uh, please, next slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm talking, uh, well, I'm starting my consideration with the area of West Virginia, where I did biostratigraphy with plant megafossils. But I will also point out certain things from Illinois, IL, and from the Tsar, shown here as SA in Germany. Uh, the, of course, the outline of the continents is shown just for orientation. Next slide, please. Here is a stratigraphic scale from 1973. And if you look where the Westphalian, Stephanian, and Moscovian, Kazimovian boundary is as compared with the Demonian, Missourian boundary, uh, it looks pretty good, even though this, this was done entirely based on the literature at that time. Next slide, please. I will also. Uh, use uh, nearly consistently the old stratigraphic terms from Europe for comparison together with the American stratigraphic terms. Uh, this is the chart we published in 2002 for the ranges of macrofossils in the Appalachian region. And with the red line, I have indicated what we consider the Westphalian Stephanian boundary in the old sense and it's marked principally by three species, Odontopteris pradii, Sigillaria pradii, and then one species that is particular to this basin and doesn't occur elsewhere, Danaeides emersoni. You notice that there is another horizon that could be identified in the higher beds, but principally it's very difficult to subdivide the higher part of the section due to the facies development. Next slide, please. Uh, in looking at uh, the Illinois Basin and trying to determine where the Westphalian D was and the Stephanian, the boundary between the Westphalian and the Stephanian, I had to look at the European literature, of course, and took the data from Germa 1971 and Levin, 1977. And I found something very interesting. Uh, Germa had found that he could subdivide the Westphalian D in a lower, middle, and upper part in the Tsar area, and that the number of uh, Maratelian Picopterus species changed. It uh, was higher. Then in the Westphalian Sea, from two to six and five, but then in the upper Westphalian D, it went to 11. In the Stephanian, it was 12. So in other words, there was a major change in the number of species of the Picopterid tree ferns. Uh, at the same time, there were of course ranges that were uh, available and to line delineate the Westphalian C, Westphalian D boundary, Neuropteris ovata was the best one. Uh, in the Olnoy Basin, there was also Odontopteris bradi and uh, Sigillary bradi available. Next slide, please. Uh, in quantifying uh, the number of species, and I apologize that this is labeled in German, that paper was published in German in 1975, uh, uh, but I have highlighted what is important here. Namely, below the Westphalian D, everything earlier than the so-called Asturian, 
compression floras are in most cases dominated by pteridosperm foliage. While beginning with the Westphalian D, it can be dominated by either pteridosperm foliage or by fern foliage. The type one and two from Maison Creek show that. These are floras from different locations that were counted in terms of species that were available. Uh, Galesburg is the same age as Maison Creek, a pteridosperm dominated flora. Terra Haute is higher up above the Danville Pole and is fern dominated. And it turned out that fern dominated floras did not appear before the middle of the Westphalian D, but they were characteristic of that time. In other words, a major changeover happened in the middle of the Westphalian D, where uh, the tree ferns increased dramatically in diversity and in cover in floras growing on plastic substrates. This is what we are looking at here. Next slide, please. At the same time, this was the interval where uh, late Asturian time, where quite a bit of the continent was covered with vegetation green here, while the ocean was a uh, still on the margin. But uh, within uh, eccentricity cycles, probably the 125,000 year cycle. Oh, the next slide, please. Uh, the ocean came in, plants survived only in refugia, shown in green here. Uh, and then, next slide please, the ocean went out again and the plant communities came back. In the Illinois Basin, through 11 cycles, in what is the late Westphalian D, the flora did not change in essence, only minor species disappeared, but that could be sampling. Uh, and however, before this interval began, there was a threshold pass and a change occurred. And directly after this time interval, a threshold was passed and uh, the flora changed. Next slide, please. So this went back and forth. Uh, 11 times, and then next slide, please. The same thing again, next slide, please. But we could also see this in a more general way. In the upper part of the figure, we see the distribution of the major plant groups through Namurian, Early Westphalian, Late Westphalian, Stephanian, and Early Permian. In red are the pteridosperms. And uh, you notice that there is a clear cut change. They are diminished, but the ferns, light blue on the left, increase. And in this case, Phenopsis increase too. A similar pattern, uh, and the Lycopsis disappear nearly. Uh, at the same interval, we have in Kazakhstan a similar change where pteridosperms. Uh, disappear. In this case, uh, the Cordites uh, take over, the blue on the right. So the change is not the same, but it occurs at a similar uh, interval. Uh, actually, it occurs a little bit later, namely at the end of the Carboniferous, Lower Permian. But uh, we see a pattern that is different for the major groups. But nevertheless, um, a similar pattern. Next slide, please. When we look at the Cantabrian or the Westphalian Stephanian boundary, we should look at uh, different basins. On the left here is the time scale, and for three different basins, the black line. Uh, gives 
the stratigraphic range of the beds. On the left is the Illinois Basin, a cratonic basin. In the middle is the Ruhr Basin, a four deep basin. Uh, I made this slide before I worked in uh, the Appalachians, so I could have substituted for it. And on the right is the Saar Basin, an intramontane basin. On the right is the thickness scale, one kilometer. You notice that the section in Illinois is rather thin, 910 meters with 70 seam, cold seams. The four deep is quite a bit thicker with 2,800 meters and 20, 224 seam, cold seams. And the Tsar as an intramontane basin uh, is nearly twice as thick with 560 cold seams. The dashed line shows the western Stephanian boundary, which was the one that led Wagner to create the Cantabrian. Um, so the first, when he created the Cantabrian, he based it on his understanding of the Saar section where he postulated a gap. So the first surprising thing is that he postulated a gap in the thickest section. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the Saar Basin is principally an extensional basin. This is from Holland and Lovni, 2020. Uh, the stratigraphic paleobiology of non-marine systems. And the red faces, the red marginal faces represents alluvial fans as consist of uh, conglomerates and sandstones, or fanglomerates, technically speaking. Uh, this is a simplified image of what the Saar Basin would have looked like. There was more tectonic there, it was more complicated. But uh, what uh, happened, and there are studies, two studies published in the 1950s, that show that at some point, next slide, please, uh, the conglomerates just spread over a larger part of the basin. That's the whole conglomerate. It appeared when a threshold was passed, where the climate suddenly went over a threshold, became drier, but with, together with very strong rainfalls that uh, occurred at times, but not consistently. So in other words, uh, the Holz conglomerate does not represent, as Wagner postulated, a condensed horizon in which time was missing, but rather the passing of a threshold and a unique event or very short time interval, which would have been part of only one uh, cycle. Next slide, please. Uh, so in other words, from that, we have no gap. The uh, original assumption of Wagner was wrong. Secondly, there is a remarkable publication just out uh, by Bessley and Cleel. The absence of regional stratigraphic hiatus in the late Carboniferous Asturian Stephanian in the northern Beriscan foreland. So in other words, the publications are now appearing that point out that there is no gap in other places. And uh, I have not uh, observed uh, a gap where I have been working here in the Appalachian Basin. There is a phases change, a dramatic phases change, and there, which indicates climatic change. So something was happening. However, the uh, observations about the uh, diversity of tree ferns in the Westphalian D indicates that this was starting earlier. Actually, in the middle of the Westphalian D, the colds in the Illinois Basin show a chemical change by the flora in that form, the cold did 
and not change. So in other words, the flora in the coal was not yet affected, but the flora that grew on plastic sediment was affected. So the uh, the conclusion is that uh, we have slow changes that do not necessarily show up in all floras, especially those that have enough water, <clears throat> but they can show up in other features like the chemistry of coats. And then when a certain threshold is reached, the system will change dramatically over a very short time period. Next slide, please. Uh, we are, if we work with ranges, we have to be take also into the consideration, as we have seen even today in previous talks, that ranges can be quite different. The, these are the ranges of the Neuroptris ovata group in I, number one in Central Europe. It's restricted to the Westphalian D or Asturian and is an excellent index fossil. In Northern Spain, it ranges into the Stephanian and here in North America, it goes straight into the Permian wherever there was a wet interval or a wet facies. We also have to be careful with first occurrences. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a curve that shows the dispersal of the Peripteris group from South China through North China, Kazakhstan, Europe to North America, where it appeared 10 million years later than it appeared in South China. This is from Lavain's work. So in other words, in the sequence in North America, Beryptus is out of order. But if we look at the complete picture, we see that it had to jump from plate to plate and that this took time, especially as this was, as this was a form with a complex uh, biology that needed one animal group to fertilize and another in, um, animal group to distribute the seeds. Next slide, please. So boundaries between chronostatic graphic units should be defined by a sequence of bioevents that reach a significant stratigraphic distance below and above the boundary. These Bio events will be lowest occurrence or first appearance datum and highest occurrence of as many different fossil groups as possible. No single bio event can be expected to be observable everywhere. And they migrate in time. Next slide, please. The use of the origination of a species for the definition of a boundary creates the appearance of precision that does not exist. Sequences of bio events can be correlated even if specific events are not observed or do not exist. The uncertainty as a result of missing bio events should be expressed in meters for any given section. Next slide, please. Summary statement. I tried to learn how to recognize this Cantabrian from Bob Wagner in 1983 in Northern Spain personally. I did, was not able to recognize it after being in the field with him there. I also talked to Levin, who later led a committee personally in a visit. So I have never been able to recognize the Cantabrian. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist. And therefore, long live the traditional Westphalian Stephanian boundary, which can be easily recognized. Thank you. Next slide, please. And that's the last slide with the technical information. Thank you, thank you Herman. That, that was a, a very interesting presentation. Um, surely, surely John Knight has a comment. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> not yet. Well, 
<laughs> I mean, I don't know. We're, we're kind of getting ahead. We set up John Nelson and John Knight, and I told Godzilla, I told Godzilla to wait for, for John Nelson's presentation because he's interested in, he, he will, I think Godzilla will resolve the Cantabrian for us. But anyway, John. Please. Well, uh, uh, I'm familiar. In fact, uh, Herman may not quite remember, but I was, uh, uh, I do remember his visit to Bob Wagner, which, uh, in Spain, which was, had a few uh, fireworks with it, as I seem to remember. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, I was working overseas somewhere else at the time, but you know, word gets through. <laughs> um, the, the only, uh, I'm, I'm familiar with the uh, stories, of course, and I will make my presentation uh, in a minute. But I think there were, there were two things uh, that uh, Herman has raised. Um, I know this recent paper by Bessley and uh, Cleal, but they are referring specifically to the north of England or central England, which at that time was a sequence of aridification of the uh, Paralic Basin north of the uh, uh, Variscan uh, origin. And I really don't believe that uh, uh, Chris Cleal is revising his conclusion of the three, meter, three million year gap below the Holtz conglomerate. Anyway, you know, we, I'll show a section which I hope uh, confirms that. Uh, I, the, the, the problem that I think uh, has always been, and I, I, I know that uh, in a recent paper by Nelson and uh, Lucas, they like to quote Minta Bosma, uh, but Minta's view, and I'm not sure whether it's quite what Herman's saying, was, well, let's just put a line between it. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, whatever the time interval is, we'll add a bit more to Westphalian D and a bit at the bottom of Stephanian A, and that's all right. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got Westphalian D, Asturian, is still not defined. We don't know what it is. Jean-Pierre Leven decided the place that he would need to find it would be Northern Spain. Uh, he didn't get round in the end to defining a uh, type section. Uh, people use Asturian loosely, but we don't know how long it goes on for. I think when people refer to the old, um, uh, the old definition of the base of the Stephanian, they mean the base of the Holtz conglomerate. But uh, uh, again, Herman can correct me or not, but I don't think the base the age of the base of the Holtz conglomerate is well defined. Uh, the Guttelberner Schichten that I looked at a little bit uh, many years ago uh, is not well characterized in terms of palynology and paleobotany. So uh, although it's nice and convenient to pretend that this issue doesn't exist, I hope I'll demonstrate that the, you know, the time that the Cantabrian represents is there. You know, it, it's a block of time. And if we're going to be chronostratigraphers as well as biostratigraphers, we have to find some rocks or prove that there's some rocks that actually refer to that time. And I hope I'll, I'll try and persuade you, but we'll see how it goes. All right, and um, <clears throat> Bill DeMichael ha has a comment. Well, I'd like to hear from Herman and, and, and John if, if it's rele relevant here. But as I understood it, I mean, I first met Bob Wagner in 79 at the International Carboniferous Congress, and he was very influential on my understanding of, of the Carboniferous. I, th I thought he was a great guy. Um, he certainly had his opinions. Um, but as I understand his discussion of the Cantabrian, it supposedly filled a temporal gap he had rocks in Northern Spain that weren't present anywhere else. And that allowed him to use plants to define an interval. And if that were, and, and I've had Arden Bashforth try to correct my understanding of this, but I'd like to hear from you guys about it. If that were so, then it shouldn't be correlatable anywhere else. And yet they later um, correlated it into North America at more than one place. So, if he found something that didn't exist anywhere else, how could it be then found anywhere else? So that still baffles me. And I think it may be my misunderstanding, but 
I'd like to hear an explanation of that if I, if I could. May I? Uh, uh, well, I think part, part of the problem is, well, let's all be honest. Uh, Bob was a difficult character and very highly opinionated and did stick his neck out in areas that were perhaps not entirely wise. Uh, I'm trying to be very diplomatic, as you understand. Uh, the, uh, I, I think we are in danger, we always have been, of mixing up chronostratigraphy and biostratigraphy. Uh, we, we are taught later on, uh, Stan's given us a, a, a background on, on the use of macrofloral zones. And uh, uh, frankly, uh, I, you know, I hope I'm not stepping on toes, but they're a blunt instrument. And I don't think Bob was very clever in extending his interpretation of the macrofloral biostratigraphy into northern aid to North America. I, I couldn't comment more on that because the, I, I know no more than uh, what, what I've seen. But the issue of the Cantabrian as a chronostratigraphic stage is does hinge on whether there is a rock succession that reflects the time that is not represented elsewhere. And I, well, certainly in Europe, excuse me, uh, there are parts of the European succession. In South Wales, it may well be that the basal part of the Cantabrian is represented. Uh, but uh, there is no total, complete succession from West, the old Westphalian D uh, with a more or less complete succession of rocks through into what is recognizably Stephanian A, uh, and certainly Stephanian A as it was classically recognized in the Massy Centrale of France. Those rocks, I hope I'll be able to demonstrate, are, it, were found in northern Spain. Now, that's a chronostratigraphic uh, definition. Uh, it needs a stratotype uh, between boundary stratotypes that defines what the, the time is. The biostratigraphy is, is stuck on top. And there are questions, I Stan has quite correctly pointed out, that uh, the chronostratigraphic units are not uh, neatly uh, linked to the megafloral zones that Bob used. Uh, but never, and also are di diachronous. I think we, we would all accept, I, I don't know whether anybody really believes that the, the megafloral zones are uh, entirely isochronous. In fact, if we quote Hedberg, uh, no bio zone is isochronous. So, you know, uh, we, we shouldn't confuse the two things. Uh, I know I've got to speak later, so I, I better stop at that point. And maybe Herman, can you weigh in on this for at the at, at the end here? Yeah, I mean, I maintain that in the Zar Basin there is no gap. There is no gap that is longer than uh, other gaps that are everywhere in the section. And we have, for instance, in the Appalachians, a very nice continuous section, as continuous as sections go. I mean. Most of time is always represented in any section by, a gap, by gaps, by short gaps. But uh, it's a quite continuous section. And I have had no problems recognizing the traditional European boundaries in North America immediately. I mean, I was, you hear my accent, I was trained in Germany on biostratigraphy of the uh, late Carboniferous. I applied it here, worked beautifully. I don't need the Cantabrian. Actually, it messes things up, especially as over time, the base of the Cantabrian changed several times. Well, can I just, I know we've got to finish, but look, uh, this issue of changing several times, it changed once. And we'll, well, uh, I'll ex explain that. But it, it does seem to hinge on the, uh, the, the, definition of the gap in the SAR. That, that seems to be the, the, 
the nucleus of the of the issue. Uh, I will touch that uh, on that later on, but okay. I, I think there would be differences of opinion in terms of the size of that gap. All right, I, I, we're running, we've run out of time. And um, I just wanna say, I, I know you'll think I'm terribly cynical to say this. And I read these quotes in Stephen Hawking's, I don't know who said them, but um, one, one good quote here is great scientists make great mistakes. And the other one I always liked is science advances one funeral at a time. <laughs> so um, we've begun the Cantabrian, but now let's, let's go to Andre Jasper, who's gonna talk about wildfire in Gondwana in the, in the late Pennsylvania. Andre, it's your talk. 